You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. We are the new, the unique, the incomparable. Those who impose on themselves their own law. Those who create themselves. It's about me, myself, I. What can you do for me? I'm number one. I'm the end of all things. I'm the measure of everything. I am I. Would you describe Pride as good family fun? Yeah. I, everyone in the family should come out. And yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Did you guys happen to see all the naked men walking yes. around? Yeah. And you think that's good for little kids to see? Absolutely. Sure. And you think that's good for little kids to see? Absolutely. Yeah. Here at Queer Kid Stuff. some of the new gender rules. Maybe you don't want to know what they are. Some of them don't seem to make much sense, much less comport with the high school biology you once learned. Remember that? Tough luck. You've got to learn them anyway. People are getting fired or getting drummed out of polite society for saying the wrong thing, even accidentally. So pay attention. A few years ago, the goal for transgender rights was acceptance. Then it was legal enforcement of transgendered identity with punishment for anyone who doesn't use the right pronouns or eagerly share bathrooms. That happened. Now we're advancing toward mandatory, mandatory, mandatory transgender dating. A transgender activist called Zinnia Jones recently lit into straight men because so few of them seem to want to date other biological men who are transgender. Jones tweeted this, I don't see a problem with telling straight guys who are exclusionary of trans women partners that they should try to work through that. Jones added this, these angry declarations that they have some absolute right not to be with trans women are just misplaced and inappropriate. Some absolute right to date who you want. You thought you had such a right. Your personal romantic preferences are no longer your own. They're now an extension of your political preferences and they are therefore public property. So if you're a biological man who prefers biological women, you are a bigot. Everything that seems too absurd or too ugly or totalitarian to be real, it'll almost inevitably become a mainstream cause for the left at some point. And then what? Why wouldn't dating websites, for example, compel men to date one biological male for every five biological females? Why wouldn't Facebook and Twitter ban users for the hate think of preferring the opposite sex? Good question. If nobody stands up to complain, they probably will. Not at all, not at all. We, we have the precise problem that America's got. It's a worldwide phenomenon and we've got to defeat it. Hitting deeper, the new push has been to get people to speak transgender's preferred pronouns in conversations or suffer shaming and backlash. What could possibly be next, you might ask? 
Well, one transgendered activist insists that straight men who don't desire transgendered women simply have an issue and should try to work through it. And uh, even has her tweet right here, and it, that's exactly what it says right here. It says that she says, or he says, I don't see a problem with telling straight guys who are exclusionary of trans women partners that they should try to work through that. So pretty much what she is trying to say, or he is trying to say, is straight guys like myself, who are straight for a reason, should try to work through and try to find transgendered women more attractive and be open enough for a relationship. And if they are not open to a relationship with a transgendered woman, they seem to have a problem. Well, first off, I'm not the one with any problem here. It seems more like you're the one with the problem considering you are the one who is trying to change their gender to the opposite gender. Secondly, there's reasons why guys are straight. It's a preference that we choose, just like you being transgendered. Straight guys are only wanting straight females. That's their preference. And if, if your preference is the male sex, then you need to find people who are interested in transgendered women because honestly, no straight guy will be open to a relationship with a person with a dick. That's just how things work. It's like the circle of life, or maybe even bigger. But I honestly don't get why this woman slash man is trying to convince straight guys they have a problem for not considering transgendered women. It's like she is upset that transgendered people or people who are interested in transgendered women are not even interested in her. And the fact she's trying to blame it on straight guys because they won't date her, I mean, let's just say I'm out in public and this person happened to come up to me and start flirting and knowingly they are transgendered. I would have to say, hey, cut it out. I would have to tell them, no, I'm not interested. And then if they had the audacity to tell me I have a problem with myself for not considering a transgendered person, first off, I would probably snap. I would lose it. And secondly, I would probably have to explain to her slash him all their problems just because they are saying I have one myself for not being interested in them. Now we're advancing toward mandatory transgender dating. So you're from Australia, and so people are raising the question, why in the world does it take a foreigner to come into the United States to tell us that American men are on the decline? What is happening to American men? Well, you know, it's not just American men, Clayton. It's men all around the world. I mean, even in Australia, we've gone from wrestling with crocodiles to wrestling with lattes. But it's, <laughs> it's a phenomenon that uh, is, I think, very dangerous, and it's having a very adverse effect on men right around the world. 
and uh, American men are, of course, very susceptible to it. It's really important, particularly in America, given the leadership role that America has in the world, sure. that American men be men. Right. Well, is this in direct relation to feminism on the rise? Is it um, a result of just sort of society seeing men that are not as masculine and men that are as masculine being kind of demonized? Elizabeth, you've hit the nail on the head. It is feminism. And basically what feminism has delivered is angry women and feminine men. And uh, it emerges from this mindset that a lot of women have unfortunately bought into this destructive idea that men prevent them from being able to achieve their goals. And from the left, from the politically correct, we have all these, these attacks on men. It's a very hard time to be a man in today's society. You gave an interview with The Daily Caller in which you said this. I think this sums up nicely. You said all aspects of male culture have been called into question, whether it's gathering around on a Sunday afternoon to watch football with a few friends, whether it's going to the range and shooting some guns, whether it's just being a male has now been really made suspect. That's... I, is it because we've sort of whitewashed the differences between the genders? That is that, you know what, men, no, we just need to be more like women. And women just need, we just need to make everyone neutral. Is it because we've sort of whitewashed the differences between the genders? That is that, you know what, men, no, we just need to be more like women. And women just need, we just need to make everyone neutral. That's exactly right. That's exactly what's happened. And we've reached a point now where men, when they want to make a decision, when they want to speak up at a meeting, when they want to say something, they're sweating more than... Paris Hilton doing a crossword. I mean, they really feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that would be difficult. Do, do you see this something. affecting national security, um, how a nation operates in Absolutely. terms of being a strong presence globally? Absolutely, without a doubt. I think it has wide-ranging implications. Wimps and wussies deliver mediocrity, and men win. And what America's always been about is winning. So I think it's, it's pivotal to the health of a country. So how do we teach our children... To be who they are. How do we teach our boys to be boys and our girls to be girls without fitting them into these stereotypes? Well, we crush this mindset that seeks to squash male tendencies, that seeks to squelch male activities. And we encourage our boys and to become great men. And we also try and educate everybody about the importance of being a manly man as opposed to an effete, urbane, metrosexual. And has Australia escaped this? Not at all. Not at all. We, we have the precise problem that America's got. It's a worldwide phenomenon and we've got to defeat it. Recently, at Hood by Air's FW runway show in New York, two male models walked down the runway with cashmere mini dresses and matching leg warmers. If this is not a biblical sign of the end times, I don't know what is. Luke chapter 17 verses 26 through 30 talks about the day when the Son of Man is revealed being like the days of Noah and Sodom. In other words, the condition of the earth at Jesus' return will parallel conditions that existed during Noah's time and conditions in Sodom. Sodom was a city of extreme homosexuality. You can read about this in Genesis chapter 19 verses 1 through 5. There we have a story when two angels visited Lot in the form of men. Jumping down to verses 4 and 5, it reads, Before they could lie down to sleep, all the men, both young and old, from every part of the city of Sodom, surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. Homosexuality and other similar perversions are becoming more prevalent in our world. Within the last 10 to 15 years, 18 countries have approved the freedom to marry for same-sex couples nationwide, while two others have regional or court-directed provisions enabling same-sex couples to share in the freedom to marry, and other countries are currently taking steps to marriage. What's more, Telfar Clemens, the designer of the cashmere mini dress for men, is a known homosexual. In our day and age, homosexuals occupy positions of importance and influence, and they are using that advantage in order to try and desensitize us to the perversity of homosexuality. They don't want to reform their perverse nature, so instead they attempt to desensitize us to it. 
clothing that is progressively blurring the lines between genders is one way of doing that. This all started with skinny jeans for men, which has gained popularity over the past seven or so years, no doubt in part to people in the entertainment industry who often sport them. The entertainment industry often sets the fashion trends of the general population. But that continued progressing, with Lil Wayne pictured here in the middle wearing what appears to be women's leopard print pants. Here we have Kanye West wearing a skirt, and ultimately Young Thug wearing a woman's dress. Make no mistake about it, the homosexual agenda is alive and well in Hollywood, and it's being pushed on our youth who watch these entertainers, and they're being conditioned to believe that there's nothing wrong with this. If you want to dress up like a woman, then dress up like a woman. Here's an example of a men's skirt that you could buy online right now. Here's another one you could buy if you want to look gay in a suit. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's wrong with this? It's just a fashion trend. Well, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 puts it this way. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. And has Australia escaped this? Not at all. Not at all. We, we have the precise problem that America's got. It's a worldwide phenomenon and we've got to defeat it. Uniform policy is strict at Isca College and this protest took full advantage. When the boys complained about not being allowed to wear shorts in the recent heat wave, they were told wear regulation skirts instead. So today, around 30 did. Well, because five people did it yesterday, so then everyone was like, oh, if everyone else does it, then they can't stop anyone else doing it, so then they might bring shorts back for the summer. Because then it's embarrassing the school I was wearing shorts, so... Well, girls are allowed to wear skirts all year round, and then they get cold legs, and we have to sit there sweating, mate. Do you think you're embarrassing yourselves in your school? No. Um, I think it's great. No one from Isker Academy was available for interview. A statement said shorts were not currently part of our uniform policy for boys, and we would not wish to make any changes. Simon Hall, BBC Spotlight, Exeter. Janet Mark from a man into a woman. What is this, man? After revealing that she's transgender woman, the New York Times best-selling author and transgender rights activist became one of the leading voices of the LGBT whatever movement. She came out publicly as a trans woman in a Mary Claire article. Here's where I want to learn, because I don't want this to be mm -hmm. an ongoing issue that I have with, with the community of which you are such a great spokesman and advocate. I want to learn why it is so offensive to actually just say that you grew up as a boy and you then, because you've always felt that you were female, you had surgery to become a woman, to become a real woman, as you say in the book. Why is it offensive? I think that we need to have a discussion about what gender is and gender expectations in our culture. I think that we are born and we're assigned a sex at birth. With the greatest of respect, and I mean with the greatest of respect, you've written a book, Redefining Realness, My Path to Womanhood.
do you dispute that you were born a boy? Do I dispute that I was born a boy? I was born a baby who was assigned male at birth.
pointing toward mandatory, mandatory, mandatory transgender dating. What is happening to American men? Well, you know, it's not just American men, Clayton. It's men all around the world. It's men all around the world. Australia escaped this? Not at all. Not at all. We, we have the precise problem that America's got. It's a worldwide phenomenon and we've got to defeat it. interested to know your perspective on religious freedom. For example, should those bakers in Oregon who had the sweet cakes bakery and refused to bake a cake for a lesbian wedding, do you think the government was right to sanction them? Should they be put out of business like they are because they will not violate their religious conscience and serve a same-sex marriage ceremony? Do you think they ought to be fined by the government or was the government wrong? Dr. Jeffress, do you believe that those who opposed slavery and those who opposed Opposed, uh, interracial marriage should not have had the law protect them and to ensure that both black and white people were able to drink out of the same fountain? So I take it your answer is yes, they should have their business taken away from them because they won't bake a, a wedding cake for a gay ceremony. Is that true? I didn't ask that, Dr. Jeffrey. No. I asked you what your, what <laughs> but you, you won't would answer, answer the question, question, will you? Would, you won't answer my question. I do not believe race is the same as sexual choice. I have an African-American pastor friend here in this community who says, don't equate sin with the color of my skin. And I believe many people of color, not all, but many, take offense that you equate sexual choices with skin color. And that's very offensive to many well, people. I, it's very offensive to me that you would equate my, my sexual orientation as a sexual choice. Yes. My sexual orientation is just as valid in my lifestyle as someone's color of their skin. It is not a choice. It is something that is a God-given well, gift. Pastor, and I not demonize pastor, people. Pastor, all sexual activity is a choice, all sexual activity. Nobody puts a gun to your head or my head and makes us do anything sexually. It is all a choice. If you're talking about inclination, that's another story. But I think it's interesting. You didn't answer the question of whether or not that baker ought to have his business taken away because his religious belief of 2,000 years in this country says marriage should be between a man and a woman. And John, that's where I'm afraid we're going here. Uh, those who cry for tolerance are going to be the most intolerant of people like us to retain our beliefs without threat of civil litigation or even governmental sanctions. And Dr. Jeffers, we've not been in this country for 2,000 years. So, you know, to say that we've Christianity religious, has been here for 2,000 years. And Christianity continues to evolve uh, during, through, through our understanding and through our tradition. God's word never evolves. It never changes. The scripture says, thy word is settled in heaven forever, O Lord. People change, opinions change, but God's word never changes. Well, I believe that God does still speaking and God continues to reveal God's good news through living beings. Just but like God's not schizophrenic. He doesn't contradict himself. I'm not saying God is schizophrenic. God has already spoken. His revelation is in scripture. And unless you're willing to say Jesus was a homophobe, how do you say in Matthew 19, he says, God created people male and female. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That is God's pattern for marriage. It's been the pattern for 2,000 years for Christianity, thousands more of years for Judaism. That's the historic understanding of the Bible. There's no ambiguity the, the, about it at all. Biblical marriage in Judaism was not about a man and a woman for the sake of love. It was about the sake of property. It was about women.
women's do men's domination over women. We've evolved on marriage. No, we it, it was, it was God's created plan. It wasn't about the domination of women. God's eternal plan was for one man and one woman. God designed marriage, and I think he knows how it best operates. Who are we to say we know better than God? So what are we saying, Dr. Jeffers, that we should continue slavery because slavery was in the Bible? That slavery was never condoned in the Bible. Ever has it been condoned in the Bible. And by the way, those who led the fight against slavery were Christians. The abolitionists were Christians who led the fight against slavery. So no, the Bible does not condone slavery. And to equate uh, gay marriage with, you know, the freedom from slavery is a complete twisting of Scripture. The New Atlantis, the Journal of Technology Society, has produced a remarkable, far-reaching landmark study which offers a summary and an up-to-date explanation of research on sexual orientation and gender identity from the biological, psychological, and social sciences covering nearly 200 peer-reviewed studies. In a nutshell, here is what science and medicine, not popular culture, media, and politics elite, political elites tell us. Number one, the belief that sexual orientation is an innate, biologically fixed human property, that people are born that way, is not supported by scientific evidence. This is not coming from a church. This is coming from scientists. Hey guys, I'm standing here with uh, Jesse and Rachel, and, uh, and, and but they have an amazing, amazing story. I met them in uh, Florida, when was that, a few months ago? The end of June. The end of June, and, and they got baptized and set free, and God, God really started something. Uh, in many ways, I think for many, we not believe their story, because we in the church, we, we don't know what is happening out in the world, and many people don't know the power in the gospel. What is your story, Baby Sean, if you can say it? So I was actually, uh, I was born female, um, and I transitioned uh, for a year and five months. I was on, um, on testosterone for nine months, and uh, I actually, <clears throat> Rachel and I dated for a year, and then we actually met Jesus and officially because I was a Christian before but I never actually repented and everything and so um, when we repented that was actually this year in May and uh, we heard the full gospel for the first time and this is when we were able to repent and um, and then we went to the conference uh, well, in Florida. And even within that week we got the clear revelation that Jessie was a girl she was created a girl by God but Satan was lying to her making her believe she was a guy and making me believe she was a guy too and but then it's, we... it's so very real that mm -hmm. we we can we can think that it's it's just us that we're trying to accept you know we have to accept ourselves as we are and it's just it's just maybe it's hard but it's just because people are not accepting it well enough or it's because I was not used to it before but you know that's to be honest, that's all lies because now that I'm out of it, I can actually see where uh, the, the devil was attacking me um, and many sins entered my life during that time so I could see that there is a great hole on me. Number two, likewise the belief that gender identity is an innate, fixed human property independent of biological sex so that a person might be a man trapped in a woman's body or a woman trapped in a man's body is not supported by scientific evidence. And what is talking about you? You have taken so much of this, so your voice is still. Yeah, my voice is still a male voice, if I can yeah. say it that way. It's but, still but, very low. Yeah. And, and medically, it's not possible for my voice to go back to what it was before, to the point that it is now. But, so, but with God, <laughs> it's, uh, anything is possible. So I'm. Uh, and I would say that when you when they got baptized, because Rachel yeah. sent her testimony to yeah. us, and it was a long, long battle. And what yes. I remember in testimony after you came out of water, you were both going to a deliverance yeah. yes and one time I think Jesse you looked at her and you yeah. said you had to let, let me go, go. Yeah, you had exactly. to let me go yes. that's something yes. the Holy Spirit actually told yeah. me to say that. yeah and, and when you let go something happened but it was this I think it was later at the hotel room later, you really received yeah. the Holy Spirit yes. how, how was it yes. well when I finally realized I was free and stopped believing the lies oh it was it was so great and now we're sisters, we're best friends, and we realized the big lie we were in, in, in homosexuality and transgender and 
now we just know we are a child of God, we are sisters, we are friends, and that's life. Yeah. And we're free. And our, we're, we're our relationship involved. evolved a lot in such a great way, and we have like a healthy relationship yeah. now because we realized that before it was not a healthy relationship. Um, we were depending on the other one and we're not respectful and everything, and now it's really changing, and that's all because of God. Number three, only a minority of children who express gender atypical thoughts. And I'll explain that. I'm sure you know what that means, but maybe some of you don't get this. Sometimes a child, a young child, very young child, may say, I think I'm a girl, or I think like a girl, or something of that nature. That's what that means. Now listen carefully to this. Listen to this. Only a minority of children who express gender atypical thoughts or behavior will continue to do so into adolescence or adulthood. There is no evidence that all such children should be encouraged to become transgender, much less subjected to hormone treatments or surgery. You know what this means? You know what he's saying here? They're saying that if a child even talks like a boy talks like he may be a girl they take that child and they begin to pump hormones into it female hormones they begin to they begin to deal with that child psychologically physically and every way under the sun to make sure that that little boy does indeed become a girl and, and, and when I met you today I also said uh, the sad thing in the church today is that we, we often know what is right but we don't give people the power to change. So it's like to say to Jesse, hey Jesse, you just have to change. Stop doing that nonsense. You had to change. You're a girl, yeah. just change. Well, this is not how the kingdom of God is working. It's, it's, we, we cannot just stop sinning. The Bible says we are slaves to sin, and that's why we need the power of God. We need Jesus to set us free and to create a new life. And, and it's so sad that we put the standard of God on people, but we don't give people the help and the power in it. And like you, 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 you understand now it's a spiritual world. You oh, need yes. a deliverance oh. for you yes. to be free. Yes. 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 How is this new life? Oh, amazing. Today I baptized my dad, I baptized a few other people. I mean, we've been living. We've your been dad is there, can you film your dad? Uh, no. No, no. <laughs> He's okay. behind the camera crying. But... This is her dad. <laughs> you, got, you, you got baptized today. I got baptized today and right after I got baptized, I baptized another man because uh, he was French. Yeah. So I translated and I did it and I felt it. And it's so great. I'm free. I'm a new man. And it's so great. I'm free. I'm a new man. Yeah, I'm a man of God right now. Uh -huh. I've seen it come in and I was real ready for it today. Listen to this one number four. Non-heterosexual and transgender people have higher rates of mental health problems, anxiety, depression, suicide, as well as behavioral and social problems, substance abuse, intimate partner violence than the general population. Discrimination alone does not account for the entire disparity. Now, who did the subject? The authors are Lawrence S. Mayer, MB, MS, PhD, scholar in residence in the Department of Psychiatry at Johns Hopkins University, and a professor of statistics and biostatistics at Arizona State University. And Paul R. McHugh, MD, professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, who for 25 years was the psychiatrist in chief at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. But when I read many years ago, I've been like Christian six years, but then I read Romans 6:14, sin had no dominion over you, you're not on the law of honor. Great. When I read that, I'm like, but then I'm free. Yeah. But if we're free, we don't have to sin. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's just a new life. And we don't say we are 200% perfect because we are still learning, we are yeah. still growing. Yeah. But it's different like before where we feel we are bound to sin, now we are bound to Jesus. And there is really a difference. And, and, and 
Yes, you can. Sometimes you grow and we learn, and the Holy Spirit go deeper and deeper. But we are free. Yeah, and that that actually changed my relationship with Jesus because now when I pray, I don't feel a hypocrite for saying sorry for something I actually chose to do, mm. like you know, sinning. I actually I was conscious when I did it. So why would I actually say sorry to God afterwards? Do I really feel sorry about it because I feel like I'm gonna do it again? Mm. So I it actually changed my relationship with God since then. Yeah, you changed. So, so a new life. <laughs> new life. Yes. Ah, two beautiful girls here. Who who love Jesus and a warm with God and a happy daddy there and uh, and uh, and and stories like this is what the world needs to hear. They want they need to hear that Jesus was Jesus got the name Jesus. Why? Because he's going to save us from our sins. Not only cover our sins so we can go on sinning, but save us from the sins. Save us to be creating a new pe- a new person in Him. Repentance, baptism, water, Holy Spirit, and new life. Love it! <laughs> Love it! <laughs>